In the deepest corner of the prison's solitary confinement cell, there was a peculiar inmate. Every day, he would climb up along the walls, not for the purpose of escaping, but to exercise his body. While others took breaks, he lifted weights. While others rested, he practiced boxing. In addition to pull-ups and push-ups, he carried the heaviest logs during work, and even ran for endurance on rainy days. The reason for his intense desire to become stronger was rooted in a deep-seated hatred. Before his imprisonment, he was an ordinary engineer with a beautiful wife. One evening, a criminal intruder broke into their home. Kyle LeBlanc heard his wife's cries for help over the phone and rushed back in a panic. When he arrived, he found his wife lying in a pool of blood, lifeless. Later on, Kyle LeBlanc managed to capture the assailant and had him brought to court. However, to his dismay, the wealthy criminal managed to bribe the judge and was acquitted. Walking free, faced with the brazen face of the man who killed his wife, Kyle LeBlanc was consumed by fiery anger. As soon as the trial ended, he seized the police officer's gun and shot the assailant dead on the spot, finally avenging his wife. Yet, the true tragedy was yet to come. Kyle LeBlanc was sentenced to life imprisonment and sent to the most notorious prison in the area, where the inmates were vicious and violence was commonplace. The corrupt prison guards turned a blind eye to the frequent fights and murders. Upon arrival, the prisoners were stripped of all their possessions. One of the guards took an interest in Kyle LeBlanc's wedding ring when he refused to hand it over. The guard viciously attacked him and forcibly took the ring. Inside the prison, there was a sadistic inmate named Andre who enjoyed tormenting the weak. Kyle LeBlanc's cellmate, Billy, often fell victim to Andre's bullying, while the guards turned a blind eye due to Andre's bribes. That night, Billy's cries of agony echoed through the entire cell block, keeping Kyle LeBlanc awake all night. The next day, Kyle LeBlanc witnessed the pitiful state of Billy and the smug face of Andre, which instantly reminded him of the despicable killer of his wife. Unable to control his anger, he landed a punch on Andre's face, and the two engaged in a brawl. The guards intervened, but they only apprehended Kyle LeBlanc, exchanging a knowing glance with Andre clearly involved in a clandestine alliance. Subsequently, Kyle LeBlanc was thrown into the small dark cell, the most terrifying place in the entire prison. He stared at the sewage flowing directly beneath his feet, emitting an extreme foul odor. The walls were stained with the blood of a previous inmate who had committed suicide, sending shivers down one's spine. Every day, the food served was a bowl of swill-like substance, resembling pig feed. Sleeping meant lying on a stone slab next to the putrid pipes. Kyle LeBlanc could no longer bear it. In the depths of the night, he tore apart his prison uniform and fashioned it into a makeshift rope intending to hang himself, but the shoddy prison uniform failed him even in his desire to die. Frustrated, he instead aimed at the wall and slammed his head against it repeatedly, losing consciousness momentarily. At that moment, a moth flew in front of him, hovering for a while before landing near the bowl of food. Kyle LeBlanc picked up the bowl, and the moth settled on the spoon, as if reminding him to eat and stay alive. In the depths of his consciousness, Kyle LeBlanc remembered his kind-hearted deceased wife, and he regained his will to survive. He forced himself to eat the hard-to-swallow food, one mouthful at a time. When Kyle LeBlanc emerged from the dark cell, the prison guard transferred him to a different cell. It contained four beds, but only one inmate. The guard coldly informed him that a serial killer resided there, having already killed his three previous cellmates. The guard said, with a sinister tone, that if Kyle LeBlanc didn't want to die, he should give him money as soon as possible to arrange for a different cell. Subsequently, Kyle LeBlanc was locked inside, only then realizing that it was occupied by a menacing figure named 451. Fear gripped Kyle LeBlanc, and the next day, he approached the guard, handing over all the money he had managed to gather, hoping for a cell transfer. The guard accepted the money but claimed it wasn't enough. Kyle LeBlanc knew he had been deceived but had no choice but to endure. He gradually learned that the prison was divided into three major factions that constantly fought against each other. The person he initially offended, Andre, not only served as the second in command of one of the factions but also reigned as the prison's fighting champion. Yes, this prison had a cruel fighting competition where the victors gained higher status, while the losers were brutally beaten to death. The guards and the warden were well aware of this, not only allowing it but also secretly facilitating it, as it brought them considerable profit. Andre's gang wasn't ready to let Kyle LeBlanc go, and while they were at work, they grabbed him and beat him up, with the guards watching from the sidelines. And not only did they not care, but they put him in a cell afterward. On a rainy day, rainwater poured directly into the house, making the already terrible environment even worse. In the depths of despair, Kyle LeBlanc finally understood one thing in this dog-eat-dog -dog place. Only violence could protect oneself. He started training like a madman, climbing walls, doing pull-ups, push-ups, punching sandbags, lifting dumbbells, carrying sacks, and endurance running. After months of grueling training, 
Kyle LeBlanc had his first fight, and his opponent was none other than his enemy, Andre. As soon as the fight began, Kyle LeBlanc took a hit, a heavy blow to his abdomen. He was completely dominated by Andre, but he endured the onslaught and seized an opportunity to strike back with a punch, and then followed it up with two, three, and a barrage of punches. But as soon as Andre recovered, he resumed beating Kyle LeBlanc mercilessly. Andre grabbed him in a shoulder throw, slammed him onto the ground, and ruthlessly kneed him in the head. Kyle LeBlanc was left battered and bloody, struggling to get up, only to be kicked down. Finally, Andre grabbed his leg and slammed it against a pillar. At that moment, Kyle LeBlanc delivered a kick to Andre's groin and then pounced on him, biting down on his neck. The situation instantly reversed, but the guards realized something was wrong and rushed in to separate them. Andre had already had his windpipe bitten through and died on the spot. Witnessing this scene, from the inmates to the guards, and even the leader of the faction, everyone's eyes widened. They had witnessed Kyle LeBlanc biting through his opponent's windpipe in the fight, and with his body covered in blood, he let out a beast-like roar that kept everyone at bay. From that moment on, Kyle LeBlanc became the new fighting champion in the prison. His fighting style was to be reckless and relentless. He would endure your punches, and then return four, five, six punches until he knocked you down. Since the rules of the matches dictated that the loser would die, Kyle LeBlanc killed one opponent after another, steadily rising in status. He cut his long hair and styled a neat pompadour, exuding the image of a boss. The person who was completely different from Kyle LeBlanc was his cellmate. Billy, faced with violence in the prison, Billy only wanted to escape. He attempted multiple prison breaks, got caught multiple times, but never gave up. One day, he used a stolen key to open the cell door and was about to retrieve the hidden pair of pliers when he was caught red-handed by a guard. This time, Billy's fate was grim. The guard handed him over to a hulking man who tortured him until he was barely alive. Before his death, Billy said to Kyle LeBlanc, don't become what they want you to be. Kyle LeBlanc finally realized his mistake and started resisting violence. Another fight came, and his opponent was the hulking man who killed Billy. However, Kyle LeBlanc chose to surrender and refused to fight back no matter how much he was beaten. This caused the warden, who was watching the match, to lose face in front of the guests. He ordered the guards to seize Kyle LeBlanc and hang him on an iron frame, saying he would be left hanging until he agreed to fight or die, day after day. Under the scorching sun and the drenching rain, Kyle LeBlanc was quickly withering away. But he never compromised. His spirit of resistance infected other inmates, and they gradually realized that in this prison, the warden was the only winner, while the prisoners were mere sacrifices. As a result, conflicts between factions were resolved, and there were no more fights in the arena. The warden's money-making schemes were completely shattered. Under the persistence of Kyle LeBlanc, peace finally triumphed over violence. However, the guards dared not kill him. If they did, wouldn't he become a martyr? One day, Kyle LeBlanc was released, and the warden finally intended to use him as an example. But instead of ordering the guards to attack him, the warden released another prisoner a giant monster-like man standing two meters tall. The giant loosened his collar and charged at Kyle LeBlanc, beating him mercilessly and attempting to strangle him to death. At that moment, Kyle LeBlanc desperately pounded on the iron door. The giant heard the pounding and surprisingly let go. It turned out that every time Kyle LeBlanc was confined to the solitary cell, he would hear someone pounding on the wall next door, and he would respond with two taps. Over time, he had become friends with that mysterious cellmate, who happened to be the giant. The giant, who had low intelligence, recognized Kyle LeBlanc and reached out to touch him. This scene shocked the warden, who immediately ordered the guards to draw their guns. In order to protect Kyle LeBlanc, the giant bravely charged at the guards, taking bullets and overpowering them, even breaking through the prison doors before finally collapsing. Enraged prisoners began attacking the guards, and soon, the riot escalated with violence, destruction, fires, and escape attempts everywhere. It was only when the guards and armed forces arrived, armed with machine guns, that the riot was forcibly suppressed. During this chaos, Kyle LeBlanc encountered his cellmate from room 451. It turned out that he wasn't a murderer but a judge. The people he killed were all heinous criminals. Room 451 had also hidden a diary filled with evidence of the warden's violent profiteering over the years. He handed it to Kyle LeBlanc, instructing him to take it out and report the warden. As for how to escape, room 451 had a plan. He wanted Kyle LeBlanc to participate in one more fight. Regardless of winning or losing, the warden, for the sake of his dignity, would send him to the execution ground, which would be the perfect opportunity to escape. Not long after, Kyle LeBlanc faced his final fight, and his opponent was the hulking man who killed Billy. This time, facing Kyle LeBlanc's full force punches, he was quickly beaten and impaled on a wooden stake, paying for Billy's life. True to form, Kyle LeBlanc was then taken to the execution grounds. In the garage, room 451, who was hiding, suddenly attacked. 
helping Kyle LeBlanc defeat the guards. Next, Room 451 had Kyle LeBlanc change into different clothes and instructed him to get into the warden's car. But Room 451 himself stayed behind, as he had more important things to do. Soon, Kyle LeBlanc passed through layers of checkpoints in the car, carrying the evidence, and left, finally returning to freedom as a man of justice. Meanwhile, Room 451 infiltrated the warden's office, steadily approaching with pliers in hand. When the guards rushed in, they found the warden with his tongue forcibly removed, condemned to the punishment of having his tongue pulled out. The man who profited through violence was finally destroyed by violence. With that, the movie concludes. I am a movie lover and look forward to our next cinematic journey. Goodbye.